Eddie, the last time I spoke, if you could leave your paper alone for a minute, we were in uh, Suzuka. Well, this is so interesting, anyway, go on. <laughs> we were in Suzuka, and you were telling me, and that was on the eve of you becoming a teammate of one Michael Schumacher, you told me you were going to get him over to Dublin and apply him with Guinness. Did that ever happen? Um, I don't remember ever saying that. You did? Did I? Well, it's never happened. <laughs> he's not visited you over there? No, uh, Michael's, you know, he's, he's a family man, so he always goes home to the family. Yeah. They, all the talk also was of him destroying you like he did with all these previous teammates and that hasn't exactly happened, does it? I mean, you've done better than any other. Well, if, in comparison, I guess I'm closer than all the other teammates, but he's won like, five races for Ferrari and I haven't won any yet. I've, had, I've been close in Argentina, but you know, I finished second there and two-thirds this year, so he's, he's got the upper hand. Right. I mean, you've had your critics this season, but at the end of the day, uh, you've been on the podium, uh, what, two or three times? Three times now. Yeah, hey, I'm out there for me and I'm out there for my team and... Um, that's all there is to it. Yep. You know, anyone, everyone else like there's the enemy. I mean, is that the way you look at it? You don't look at these guys as um, colleagues? No, it's um, it's war. As bad as that? It is, yeah. And when you hear somebody like, I don't know, I seem to remember Jack Villeneuve had words to say. I thought Johnny Herbert was very cruel about you two or three years ago when he said some remark on a first corner somewhere. And he's, he keeps having a pop. I mean, what, how do you get on with these guys when you meet them after the race? I just say hello to them, but I've, you know, I've no, um, no feelings for them one way or the other. But if they're in the track, I'm going to have them if I can. Johnny, what are you doing here today? You, you, you got a day off from uh, the real world of Formula One and you come to a motorsport event. Why don't you get your feet up at home? Uh, well, it was just basically I organised this a couple of couple of months ago, and it was it was just a good good time to have a good day out and uh, drive an old an old Formula One car from the 70s, and you know, and the public can see sort of the modern day drivers mm. when they are normally only see them either on the television or the mm. or the British Grand Prix. So, yeah. I mean, it's funny you should say that because you know it just occurs to me that increasingly Formula One is uh, yes, it's very entertaining, but it's it's so removed from the public these days, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's you know it's just the way I think you know sport in general has gone. I think athletics are exactly the same. Where they, you only see them come on. They they they're probably there for a shorter space of time. Lynn from Christie's there for sort of ten seconds, and then he's then he's straight off, whisked off. Mm. So uh, you know it's an opportunity for at least the you know the public to to see us and maybe meet us in between. So you're you're happily out there for two hours signing autographs, walking through the crowds, having a burger with the uh, the punters. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say happily. After sort of about 20 minutes, it's sort of then it's getting a bit sort of long in the tooth. But I can do 20 minute stints after with a few hours break. <laughs> then it's not so bad. Steve Soper, I'm sorry to remind you of Le Mans, but it was only a week ago to this to this very day. What what are your reflections uh, on your time there? Walk us through what happened. Well, basically, we didn't win. <laughs> But uh, I suppose the car was competitive, it had a problem, it ran for three and a half hours, it then broke a water pipe and we lost eight laps in the pits fixing the water pipe and basically all hope of winning the event or finishing say on the podium were probably gone then. Um, all we tried to do was catch up and obviously eight laps you never ever catch up in a 24 hour race. But it's not just about winning is it? Isn't it all about taking part? I think I know what the answer to this question is going to be by the way. Well it's, I think if you do it for a living and you, you race every weekend and you've been racing for 20 years and it's part of your, your living, I can't say as I like the, the race. I want to do the race to come away and say I've won this fantastic historical event um, and if you or uh, as has been with me in the past people have rung me up and said do I want to drive a certain car and I know I know the car's got no hope in hell in winning then I would say no I don't want to drive and I'll stay at home and spend the time with my family rather than just turn up and n not not compete with a chance of winning. 